Hi everyone, today I'm going to be talking about a very important concept in mathematics that was developed mainly by the German mathematician George Cantor. It's the concept of the cardinality of a set. Let's discover the maths. What is cardinality? In the case of finite sets, it's very straightforward. The cardinality of a set A is just the number of elements the set contains, and it's denoted by A between vertical bars. For example, the set X equal to ABC has three elements, so we say that X has a cardinality of three. The empty set has no elements, so it has a cardinality of zero. Now let's think about the case of infinite sets. What, for instance, is the cardinality of the set of all integers, or the cardinality of the rational numbers? How many elements does the set of real numbers have? In the finite case, it's clear that two sets have the same cardinality if there's a defined bijection or one-to-one -one correspondence between them. For example, A equals ABC and B equals 1, 2, 3 have the same cardinality because there's a bijective function f from A to B such that f at A equals 1, f at B equals 2, and f at C equals 3. This property allows us to define the concept of cardinality of arbitrary sets. We say that two arbitrary sets, finite or infinite, are equipotent if there's a bijective function f from A to B. In a case where two sets are equipotent, we say that they have the same cardinality. So, we can generalize the concept of cardinality to infinite sets, but we have to be prepared for some surprises. Consider the set of natural numbers n and the set of even positive numbers p. It's immediately clear that there's a function f from n to p, which is bijective. It's simply f of n equals 2n. Therefore, we can say that both sets are equipotent, have the same cardinality, and have the same number of elements. How can that be, that the set of all natural numbers is equal in size to the set of even numbers? It seems counterintuitive, yet it's correct. One of the strange results we get when we start dealing with infinite sets. It's also strange but true that there are the same number of natural numbers as there are integers and rational numbers. Sets with the same cardinality as n are known as countable sets. So n, z and q are all countable sets. Their cardinality, which is the same as that of natural numbers, is denoted by aleph null, also called aleph zero, where aleph is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. What about the real numbers? Cantor put forward a procedure known as Cantor's diagonal argument, which shows that there's no bijective function between n and r. This leads to the conclusion that r is non-countable, and therefore that aleph null is less than cardinality the set r. Cantor believed that cardinality r was the next largest cardinality after aleph null, a property known as the continuum hypothesis, but he failed to prove it. The great German mathematician David Hilbert included the continuum hypothesis in his famous list of 23 unsolved problems in 1900. Later mathematicians Kurt Gödel and Paul Cohen showed that from the axioms of set theory, the truth of the continuum hypothesis can neither be proven nor denied. For some mathematicians, this suggests that perhaps we should review the axioms with which we work in mathematics and add some more that are related to infinite cardinals. We will return in future videos to look in more depth at some of the issues we've discussed here. But for now, thanks for watching and I'll see you again very soon to discover more maths.